for your life do you believe the prophecy you are saying that nothing is impossible with God whatever you desire and whatever God has placed in your destiny everything is possible nothing is impossible with God in the name of Jesus so sing it for yourself you are the person sitting there, it, it, it has nothing to do with that. It only has something to do with you. Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible when you trust in it. Voice of God to thee. Is there anything too hard for me? And put your trust in God alone and rest upon His word. For oh, everything, for oh, everything, yes, everything is possible with God. Nothing is impossible. When you put your trust in God, nothing is impossible. When you trust in God, are you singing? Hark into the voice of God to me. Is there anything too hard for me? And put your trust in God alone and rest upon. Father, thank you that everything is possible with you. I pray for every hand lifted up. That whatever you have placed on our hearts as a desire becomes possible. Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit we receive it. Everything is possible yes, it is with possible. God. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I want those in the canopies to give me a shout of hallelujah. Wow. God is doing wonders. Today is Swollen Sunday. One member, two souls. One member, that you shout, two souls. One member, two souls. one member, two souls. one member, two souls. and 31st night is one member, how many souls? One member, five souls. 31st place. We cannot pack here on 31st we'll be sitting there as well so come early and you shall be blessed 
So this morning, uh, whatever the time is, it doesn't really matter. We are, I'm preaching about the days of Noah and the days of Lot. And I want you to listen carefully because it's going to be short but very important. Luke 17, verse 26. I want to bring you greetings from, uh, we were in France, Toulouse. Toulouse in France, you know, the aeroplanes, listen, otherwise you can't know where you are shouting that you'll, you'll be. <laughs> Toulouse is where they make Airbus. You know the aeroplanes, we have two types, Boeing and Airbus. So Airbus is made in France. It's made at in Toulouse. So that is where we had to give that self-holy conference. And a lot of people attended. It was a beautiful conference. And then we're, we were in Burundi. Burundi is um, like the Equapin Mountains. There's no flat part anywhere. The whole country is mountains from beginning to end. So anywhere you are going, you go like this. Around. And then we were in Rwanda. Rwanda is also the same. But Rwanda mountains are a little spread. But there's no flat place. There's no flat place. So Aborian Mampong is a Burundi type of environment. Very beautiful. And very, um, how do you call it? Very um, nice. Very beautiful. So that's a blessing. I was privileged also to meet with the president of Burundi. We had a long time to talk. And um, many souls were saved. Many people were blessed. Amen. So we are excited to be back. Tonight is Carol's uh, service. So, that's a blessing in a few hours. But for now, the days of Noah and the days of Lot. Luke 17, 26. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat and they drank and they married wives and they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And then the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat and they drank and they bought and they sold and they planted and they build it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus it shall be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the days of Noah today. And these two examples, Noah and Lot, are the examples of um, salvation for a few people when the majority goes into distraction. So, you must believe in the word of God because if there was ever a time when you can say that this is the days of Noah and the days of Lot, it's now. They were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were giving in marriage, they were planting, they were building. Life was going on normally until suddenly the righteous man was excluded or removed from the system. 
So, this is what we call exemption. Exemption. It's faith for exemption. Faith to be exempted from what is going to happen to the majority. So, as you are here, you know, although there may be about 7,000 people here today, but there are many, many millions of people who are not here. So you, you must never think that uh, Christianity is in the majority. Those who serve God are always a few. And you must not be sad to be part of the few who are saved. Noah was saved with eight souls. Only eight people were saved from the whole city, the whole world. Only a few souls. Genesis chapter 6. Quickly. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all. Now this little scripture is telling us, we're talking about the sons of God or angels or supernatural beings invaded the earth. So in this last day, the days of Noah, you have a lot of supernatural demonic infiltration into the world. Yes. That's the days of Noah. So you must be careful because Today, a lot of people are demonized. We were in Rwanda and they killed one million people. Like, you know, when I was going there, I met some people from Rwanda and I didn't know we were not supposed to mention Tutu, Tutsi and Hutu. I asked them, that, do people speak the same language? And they told me, we speak the same language. There's nothing like Pi or Fanti or Gan or Dagbani or Ewe. It's only one language. So, one group with one language turn on each other and kill. So, you can see that Bible says Satan is a murderer from the beginning. So, you see that Satan entered the nation and made them kill. Even pastors killing their own members because they were from a different tribe. So, you must be careful. These are the last days. And then there were demonic infiltrations through sex. So, you must be careful about who you have sex with. And you must be careful of sex. Sex is one of the main ways through which evil spirits come into people. So, the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. Alright? And there were giants in those days. Now, verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So, wickedness in the earth. Evil imaginations all over the world. And it repented the Lord that he made man. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the surface of the earth. Both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowl of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. Now, today, you can see that the world is full of evil. Evil everywhere. Violence that we never had before. Wickedness that we never had before. All right? Uh, verse 11. The earth was corrupt and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked on the earth and it was corrupt, it was spoiled. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. So today we have violence. We never had this kind of violence before. Even in Ghana, we hear of people being killed. We never had these type of things before in Ghana. But now you hear it. You hear it all over the world. So these are the last days and today, God is stretching out his hand to everyone 
and he's saying to you, come to me. Come to Jesus and be saved. Amen. Amen. Come to God. So, if you are here and you are listening to me, you must know that these are the last days. You see, the world didn't start with you. It's been around for some time. And there was a time when human beings were plenty on the earth. You know? And God said, you know, I don't like the way people behave. People are too evil. You know? And the corruption. You see, if you take meat, when you put meat down and it starts getting spoiled, you can't reverse it. It's, it's, it's rotten. It's spoiled from inside. So you can't put it back in the fridge or make it, correct it. And so that's how the earth has become the world. But this, ha- this has happened, this is the second time it's happening. It happened before. Now, in the history of the world, there is no, there's no part of the human race that does not record a great flood. All through the history books of human beings in South America, in America, different cultures, they all record a great flood which flooded out the world and everybody died. It's, 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 it's history. You can Google it after church. Great. Huh? Even Ashanti's have it. Ashanti, what do they call it? Huh? In Suwat. In Suyiri. Yeah. A great flood that came. Now, even this morning, there was a, a tsunami in somewhere. You know? Indonesia somewhere, there was a tsunami. And so many people have died. But you see, the water in the world is more than the earth, the land. So when the water wakes up, it can move over the whole city to the height of these buildings and cross Accra from the sea, from Teshi, Labadi, Kolegono, Choko, and sweep at a height higher than these buildings and cover everywhere. I mean, even if you know how to swim, if you see it, when it is coming, it, it moves cars and buses and trains are moved. Trains are moved with the water. I mean, nature has been known to go out of control completely. It's not a new thing. You know, and it was because of the wickedness of man. God said, no, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. You know, because man is changed, has changed so much. The, 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 the nature of man and all the type of sins we have are more complex. You know, you even feel sorry for people who are being born now. That Charlie, what is it going to be like when you grow up? What is it going to be like in 30 years time in the world? Yeah. There's so much evil. I was talking to somebody. They told me that in South Africa in the last six months, they had had 150 bank robberies, open daylight uh, attacking of the bank cars in daylight, shooting and killing and everything in six months. You know? That the nations deteriorate and change. You know? But it's happened before. And God said, no, I can't take it anymore. And I'm going to wipe them all out. It's finished with these people. So I think that we find it difficult to believe that something like this can ever happen. But that is why the Bible says in Genesis 20, Genesis chapter 6, all right, and verse 8, it says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And I believe that you are finding grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. So in the midst of the evil, there are some people who find grace. And today you are one of the people finding the grace of God. Amen. Why, why do I say grace? Because grace means something you don't deserve. You don't deserve it. 
But God somehow has found grace for you. That's why you are here. As for me, I always thank God because, you know, I'm a half caste, half Swiss, half Ghanaian. So, our tithe, we are few in church. Yes. So, I, mean, I really see it as grace that I should be in church. I really see it as grace. You don't see many of us here. Our type. Hmm? Not many. Yeah. And look into your family. You may be surprised you are the only one. Or not many from your household. I say it. God has shown you grace. The Bible says Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So when you find grace, thank God. It's just the grace of God that God has brought you to his house to be saved. You must be saved. And like the people were giving the testimony, that's what Christianity is about. Yes. Christianity is not about becoming rich or getting money. We have a lot of preaching like that now. Also, come and be blessed. Come and be blessed. I pray for you and, and God, uh, I pray for you. Let, you give some, offering to, give some offering to an orphanage and your, your secular music will be okay. No, no, no. Christianity is about salvation. You get changed and you turn around. Repent means to turn around and turn away from your sins. Yes. There must be a major change. You cannot do all the things you used to do before. There is a change. Christianity is about changing. Great change. It's not about maintaining your boyfriend and coming to church. Or maintaining your smoking and drinking and every bad thing that you used to do. There is a real change. And I tell you, when you change... You don't, have to, you don't have to shout at the leaves of a mango tree. Fall down. When, is there? when the tree is there, the leaves themselves will fall down. Yes. All those things will drop off you. When you find Jesus, nobody will be shouting at you to do anything. You see that when the root of the thing is gone, then you are blessed. Now verse 9 of Genesis chapter 6. And it says, what does it say? These are the generations of Noah. Now notice, it's it's a a verse that we don't often see. All right? It says, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. To serve God you must have some qualities. And Noah walked with God. You see, we always say Enoch walked with God. Noah also walked with God. Noah and Enoch are the two people we ever hear of walking with God. Yes. Enoch, Noah in the midst of everybody gone astray, he was walking with God. Today you will walk with God. If everybody is going astray, walk with God. Yes. What does it mean to walk with God? It means you you have somebody who can talk to God and somebody whom God can speak to and somebody who God can tell things to do and he will do it. Yes. Somebody who can do what God wants. Noah walked with God. I only walk with people obviously who flow with me. If I don't flow with me, how can I walk with you? So for Noah to walk with God, he was flowing with God and what God wanted. And so God wants you to walk with him closely in this wicked generation. And to make it easier, you must disconnect from all your old friends. I want to tell you something. You know, it is not so difficult to be a Christian as you might imagine. When you are on the other side, It looks difficult. But if you come into Christ and you change your friends, it becomes much easier. Because, you know, I'm not under pressure to to, to drink or to smoke or or all those things. I don't feel that pressure. Because nobody in my my life drinks. I don't don't have any... I'm, I'm never at a place where they are sharing beer. I don't, I don't, I don't know where, where they share beer. Where do they serve beer? 
I don't even know where they serve it or where they sell it. I don't have people who are smoking in my world. So Christianity is much easier when you change your company. So even though it says Noah was a just man and perfect, you don't have to be so worried and thinking that, oh, I mean, I can't make those standards. No, it's because you have not changed the group you are in. If you change the group and you change the people that you are with, you'll be surprised that it's so much easier because no one does certain things in the world that you are in. Yes. If you move with girls who have boyfriends and sugar daddies and so on, you'll be tempted because they'll come back with new things, new clothes, Brazilian hair and all these things. And your hair will be from Kumasi or whatever. And you are not getting the Brazilian hair. So you, you, may, you, may, you, may, you may feel hot. You get what I'm saying? But if you move with ordinary people, I tell you, you just flow. And it's not so difficult to be a just man and perfect, even though the whole world has gone astray. Yes. Look, today, you see, Ghana is a very religious country. But you see, the Bible says it's not everyone that says, Lord, Lord. Who will enter? Many people will come and say, Lord, Lord, we did great works in your name. That means that they, they, they were religious. They had religious works. Wow. They built orphanages. They had crusades. They were preaching. He said, we did great work. We cast out devils in your name. Wow. I mean, but they didn't, they didn't know God. They didn't know God. So Ghana has, you know, there is no function that you know people will not pray. Wicked liars and thieves will be praying. Yes. Liars and thieves, demonized people are praying. Yes. So you must decide to walk with God in purity, in righteousness, and to try your very best to do what is right. God knows that we are failing. But at least the effort is there to walk with God. If you don't do that, you become religious. And religion is a very dangerous thing. Why do I say that? It's dangerous to be religious without being born again. Very dangerous. In Rwanda, priests, priests were killing, holding cutlass and killing people. You can read it on the internet. It's not, 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 I don't, you just Google priests involved in genocide. And the names will come up and you read their stories. Priests in genocide. Just Google it and see. Yes. You see the names. Some of them are even free. They are, they are still at large. They are looking for them. Jesus was not crucified by armed robbers. Jesus was not crucified by drunkards. None of the people who crucified Jesus was drunk on that day. They have not tasted any alcohol. They were all pastors and religious people. So you see, when we are giving testimonies, we are giving testimonies of salvation, not of religiosity. Religiosity is a very dangerous thing. Yes. When I, 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 you see, I was born, my father, I don't want to mention names of churches, but he used to take us to a church. I was baptized, I was confirmed in one church. Then when I went to school, the school was also from another church. So there was a priest there and home too, they were taking me to church. But I was never born again at all. I, I found church one of the most boring things. Christianity was so boring. When I went to Achimota school, I saw the people in the common room doing scripture union. I, I look at them, I say, what type, of, what type of boring people are these? They'll be praying even the first time I went to a room where they were praying, shabbat, shabbat, I started laughing. I mean, I burst out laughing. I said, what kind of madness is this? Oh, yes. Religion, but no real power. In 2 Timothy 3, it says that there are people who have the form of godliness, but they deny the reality of the power. The power of God changes you. And you change. You actually change. You actually change. If you are homosexual, you change. Homosexuality is, is, is equally a sin as fornication. It will never be accepted by God. In fact, there are serious warnings in the Bible. In the days of Lot, it will be increased. Homosexuality. 
blatant, open, violent. Yes. And there are many of us here who have been involved in that. Girls with girls, boys with boys. Yeah. But if you've met Christ, that thing has to go out of you. Oh, yes. You have to. Otherwise, otherwise you deny the power. You say that there's no power in Christianity. Either there's power in Christianity or there's no power to change you. When a man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Okay, then if there's no power, then there can be no new creature. Power, if there is power, then there are changes. There are real changes. Bad wife to good wife. Bad person to good person. There must be change. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 There must be change. We are not talking about religion. Do you think those people in the days of Noah were not going to church or they were not having some kind of God? Oh, God. People have been calling the name of God for years. Doing all kinds of things in the name of God. If you want to see somebody who was in a religion but was not born again, look at me. Number one. That's why today I don't know him and I have no apology. And I don't like him. I don't like him because it reminds me of the days when I used to go to church when I didn't know God. It reminds me of, and it reminds me of funerals. So I don't, I don't make any effort to learn hymns. Yes. They'll sing. You, but you don't know God. I hated it. I just wanted it to finish. I, I wanted the priest to say, today we sing the first and last stanza. I said, this man is very good. He's making things go faster. How many have experienced that before? Hey, I thought it was only me. First and last stanza. Research now him. Offering. Hey. Religion without power. Priests will be announcing how much beer they are drinking. And how much you owe me one carton of beer. From the pulpit. Christianity has power. It really changes people. If you are not changed, if you are not yet a Christian, I'm telling you, it really changes us. It changes us. And you keep on changing through the years. You cannot say you are in this generation without a change. Noah was not just, oh, God found grace. So he, was, he found grace and he was a just man. He was attempted. Even though he was a sinner, he was attempted. Yes. And when he came out, you see that his problems were there. He got drunk. As soon as he came out of the flood, he went to drink. You see, it's not easy not to be contaminated. But the effort is there to serve God. So don't be too worried when you sense the drawings towards certain things. It is there but your determination to serve God and to be he, 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 Noah, Noah moved by faith. Yes. He believed God and he obeyed God. Yes. So today God is calling us to be different. Yes. He's calling us to come out. Even though everywhere everywhere is so corrupted so spoiled. I mean, some of you, you started watching pornography by the age of 11, 9. You were seeing things that even up to today, some grown-ups have never seen. And you know, that is why some people cannot marry. Because what you have watched, when you go into the real chamber, you can't see, it's not there. You look and you say, ah. What I saw is not what I see. <laughs> Are you ready to be a Noah in this day when the whole world has gone astray? Are you ready to stand out like Noah? Bible says in Hebrews 11, by faith Noah was moved with fear. 
He feared God. Yes, he feared God. And prepared an ark for the saving of his house. At least he saved his house. At least he saved some few people through his faith. And he's listed there. Nothing is mentioned of his drinking problems. Yes. Nothing is mentioned. You see, God is just. Your salvation is by your faith. You must believe in God and come out and follow Jesus. Even though the whole world has gone astray. You know, when I was in school, I was so odd. Yeah. In university. I said, I'm preaching. The whole bus was full of medical students. When I stand to pray, I said, let us, let us pray. Nobody was into, pray, into preaching. They just look at their books. And I was like a fool standing from Kolebu in the hot sun to, to Legon. I preach. I don't care. Early in the morning, we are studying. We are preparing. And I stand and preach. Become a preacher of righteousness. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Yes. In this day and age. I can see through it all because I've been there just religious but I don't know Jesus. Just religious. And I'm not going to live my my life eating and drinking, planting and building and marrying. I'm working as though Jesus is coming tomorrow. Yes. And I want you to also work. That's why we are saying one member, two souls. We are trying to win souls. For Jesus. That's the great effort you can make in this, in this last day. Oh, yes. It's a, you know, 40 years' time, a lot, a lot of people will not be here. 40 years from now, 50 years. Oh, a whole generation, you, everybody will be gone. You have to read history books to know some of the names that we mentioned today. You have to read deep history to know names of people who are here now. Deep history. Yes. Archives. You have to go into archives. But Noah found grace. Noah chose to stand out and be on. Now he prepared an ark. You can imagine how foolish he looked. People came to see him building an ark at East Legon. And said, "Ah, so how will you take the boat from here to the sea? Do you know where the sea is? Noah said, no problem. And he built the ark. I am sure... GTV came to cover it at a point. Oh. Huh? Or Metro TV. Yeah, TV3. TV three. UTV. UTV. TV. They came to interview him. Sir, I hear you have prophesied rain. No, I said, please. If you want to hear my message, come to church. Because Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Wow. He was a preacher. And he prepared the ark and built for God. He built for God. He built for God. And the people knew not till the day that he entered the ark. And can you believe when he entered the ark, you know when the rain came? Seven days later. So I'm sure CNN and everybody was outside and said, ladies and gentlemen, the madman entered this ark last Tuesday. And he says it's going to rain. It's been five days now. The weatherman has not predicted anything unusual. And we are still watching. Then seven days, there, 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 there was some slight drizzle. And they said, oh, it's just the beginning of the rainy season. And then some small sprinkles came. Do you know the rain that gives floods? The rain that, I will tell you, for, just for your own safety. The rain that gives flood is not the heavy rain. It's the continuous rain. Yes. It can be average rain, but continuous. Doesn't stop. There will be a flood just now. Yeah. Watch out for that type of rain. For your, for your own safety. So the rain started to flow, come. The normal type of rain. You get what I'm saying? Noah was in the boat with his wife and then his three sons and their three wives. How many is that? 
eight souls. All his work, only eight people. Only eight souls. Those eight souls became the fathers of the whole world today. Eight souls. You never know how precious a soul is when you save one person. And Noah turned to God. And then the rain came. Rain came down and the floods came up. The rain came. Is that a song like that? And the floods came up. The rain came down and the floods came up. And the wise man's house. That's for the wise man. This one is for Noah. The world, came tumbling. the world came tumbling down. Gradually, gradually, there were floods. You can never believe that a place can flood till you see it flooded. I think I've showed you once Mozambique, the floods. You see the people, the whole town is covered with water. And the water kept coming. All the good swimmers were swimming. They said, we'll swim to the higher ground. Yeah. Those who went into apartments, they were upstairs. But the water kept coming up yeah. and coming up. Rain, rain. Go away. Then they started to pray, rain, rain. You remember some years ago, Kenya Airways went and fell into the water at uh, Abidjan. They took off and they entered the sea. I asked some people who were involved in it, they said that the first man to swim, it was just, you know, Abidjan Airport, when you take off, you are over the sea direct. You just take off and you are on the sea. So they just fell right into the water. And some people who could swim came. So the first person who came was a Frenchman. Mm. Swimming. You know, they swim in their country. That's why I keep on explaining to you that you have to learn how to swim. My church members must be swimmers. Because I need you to enjoy your honeymoon. Look at the people in the canopy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Swimmers. The second one was a Nigerian who could swim. Yes. And those who could swim came. But in the days of Noah, maybe the first French. They swam and then still the water came for them. Still coming, still coming, still coming. There's still no higher ground until everybody was gone. Those who could float, those who could swim. I want you to watch a film called Deep Water. Yes, you see, it's a true story. They fell into the water and they left them. And they swam and swam and swam. No matter how good you are. It reaches a point you cannot continue. And everybody drowned. Noah was on the boat alone. Then he would turn to his children and say, Ham, come. Can you believe that? When we look out, we can't see any land. He, Shem, and Japheth, they, they would call and say, My sons, come, let's pray. So, is it possible that what we believe is true? Is it possible that what we believe is true? That it has happened practically? That the whole world has been drowned? No one will, no one will go to bed with his wife and say, Wifey, you are the only one left for me. No more options. Hey! <laughs> I'm sure that Noah's wife felt very secure. But there are no other girls in the world again. Only she and Noah. <laughs> All accusations ended after the flood. But there were no more girls. Nobody. Huh. Then Noah would send out a raven. The raven would go and come. The dove, when he sent the dove, the dove came back. Well, dove don't eat dead meat. In Rwanda, they killed every dog. They had to shoot all dogs because the dogs were eating the people, the dead people. So they killed every dog in the whole country. So ravens don't eat flesh. A raven will eat, but dove, no. 
dove doesn't eat dead meat. So the dove, it was too dainty. The dove had to come back. Yes. Then finally they came out of the boat. The whole floor was muddy. And they looked and said, so we are the only people left in the world. Everything we believed and we preached was true. They planted, they built it, they married, they gave in marriage, they did everything normally. You can't live normally when you are hearing this prophecy. Jesus gave this prophecy. He said, as it was in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot, that's how it will be in the coming of the Son of Man. It was a prophet. Jesus is the greatest Jewish prophet. And it has all come to pass. Violence. We have never had this violence. We have never had homosexuality like this. We have never had all materialism. Planting, building, finding things. So many things. No, never. Wickedness and violence in the earth. The highest ever. But Noah. So Noah told his sons, let's, let's, we have to restart the world. So you have to be careful of Noah because Noah is like Adam. He was the only man in the world. And the Bible says he saved eight souls. How many Noahs do I have here? Only six Noahs. The faith of Noah is to save eight souls. Yes. That's what the Bible says. Being few, he saved eight souls. Amen. Eight souls. Hallelujah. Amen. 1 Peter 3 verse 20. Which some were, time were obedient, once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, wherein few, few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Eight souls saved by water. Yes. The faith of Noah will make you to save eight souls. Uh, you see, instead of telling you, greatness is to have a private jet and a land cruiser. I'm not, I'm not showing, I'm not putting in front of your nose diamonds and gold and materialism. I'm showing you spiritual ideals, good things from God that you should attain to as a Christian. Yes. Yeah. Forget about those land cruisers and what have you. They will come. That, that one is nothing. This is eight souls. Be a savior of souls. Be a Noah. Prepare your ark. Prepare to be an odd one out. Don't worry about who. I'm sure Noah's marriage was better after the flood. All of, because you have no one else. Who are you going to quarrel about? Yes, that's the two of you. They had a better life after salvation. So today, I don't know who you are, but you need to be prepared to be odd. Yeah. You see, politics may be the most difficult for you. Those of you who want to do politics, because that's where you have to stand for the truth. There's no political party that doesn't have strange things. All of them have so, such weird things. That's why it's, diffi- you, it's sometimes difficult to be a Christian and to be part of it. Because very soon, you have to criticize your own people. You can't defend things that they are doing. Because spirits are controlling things. But I want you to stand, whether it's on campus, whether it is in your workplace. No girl here must be promoted through sex. In Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name. No. No girl here must be promoted through sex. No way. Yes. Stand up for Jesus. Be separate. Be a preacher of righteousness in this wicked generation. Amen. And your name will be written in the book. And one day you'll be standing like Noah was standing with his family. What? One, he counted my wife, Shem, your wife, Ham, your wife, Japheth. That's all. There's nothing, nobody, and animals. Animals were saved. Crocodiles were saved. Human beings were too rich and too big. 
to believe Noah, they made a fool of him. But the day will come, you will not be making such a fool of us. Today is the day of salvation. I don't know who brought you here, but today is salvation day. It's salvation day for everybody here. We are celebrating salvation, pure salvation. We are not celebrating having a car or a money. We are celebrating Jesus has saved our souls. Yes. Do you think I'm not important? Do you think I'm not important in Ghana? Why should I go to Burundi? Why should I go to Burundi? Or Rwanda? When I was in Burundi, the soldiers that were following us with rocket launchers, you know rocket, it, you, yeah, you, 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 you see that when they shoot, it can bring a plane down. All these ones were around are plenty. A country with soldiers everywhere. Why? Because Jesus said, go ye to the world and preach the gospel. So even if I'm odd like Noah, I like it. I like to be odd till Jesus returns. How many Noahs do I have here? Noahs. I want to see your name, Noah, if you are a Noah here. Yes. Ready to stand up for God and be strange in the system. And God is going to bless you. Yes. Now, now think about it too. The man who didn't plant and build, all houses in the world were now for him. No, think about it. No, there's no owner. Every house that has been built, all the money, all the gold, all the silver was now belonging to Noah because he was the only one and he was the father. He wasn't a politician, but he became the king of the whole world. That's how it is when you serve God. What you didn't seek for, it now falls to you as a side effect of many things. Let, let me tell you something. Do you know Panadol? Panadol? How many have taken Panadol before? Raise your hand if you've taken Paracetamol or Panadol. What is it used for? What is it for? Pain, isn't it? But can I tell you a side effect? A side effect. A side effect that it makes you drowsy to sleep. Yes. Don't take a lot of it. It's dangerous. You see, the side effect of serving God, you'll be surprised. I said you'll be surprised. The side effect. Things that you, are, you desire but you can't even pray for, they will be happening to you. May the side effect of following Jesus be your portion for the rest of your life. In Jesus' name. Stand to your feet, everybody. Tell somebody, I'm ready to be Noah. daughters, you know what they said? They said, are you becoming a judge of us like you are pointing out that we, we shouldn't do homosexuality? Yes. Genesis, I think, 19. Yeah. Amazing. They said, Have you, are you becoming a judge of us? Yes. They laid down the men of the city compassed old men and young men so old homosexuals and young homosexuals, oh, this is open, open homosexuality. Yes. And they called unto him, bring them out now. We want to know them. Verse 6. And Lot went and shut the door after him and did what? Verse 7. And said, no. Don't be wicked. Don't change somebody's orientation. Verse 8. I have two daughters. I will give them to all of you. The whole town. (laughs) 
<laughs> you can do to my daughters who came from my, my wife to whatever you feel. And what did they say? The next verse. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this man who came as a visitor is not even from this town. Does he want to be a judge? You are judging us. We will not deal worse with him than with the, with the visitors. Your enos there, it will be torn into pieces. You wait and see. We will leave the enoses of the visitors. Yours will be finished. No, you see, the Bible says, as it was in the days of Lot. And it's, it's increasing. You can hardly escape it now. It's everywhere. Yes. Open, violent, arrogant homosexuality. Yeah. But you are being exempted from the wickedness and the evil in the world in Jesus' name. And your children. None of your children will fall into this evil. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Just a moment. If you are here today, maybe somebody invited you to church. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ. Maybe you have fallen into all the sins of the world. But today, you want to take Jesus and come out of the world and come to God. Just as Noah preached and nobody minded him, but his own children listened to him. Today, you must listen to what I'm saying. God is calling you from a life of sin and wickedness. You must come to God. Yes, this is your chance. As every head is bowed and every eye closed. If you want to make a decision for Jesus today. And turn around. Turn for God. And say, Pastor, please help me. I need God today. I need God. I need Jesus today. Then raise up your hand wherever you are. Standing. And I'm going to pray with you. Lift it up high. Everywhere. Outside. Inside. Everywhere. This is why you are here. For salvation. These are the days of Noah and the days of Lot. And your day of salvation has come. As it was in the days of Noah. An ark is being prepared. Decide at least if at all you are nothing. An animal who can be saved. If you don't want to be a, a rich human being. Be at least an animal and be saved from the waters that are coming. If you want Jesus, your hand must be up. If you want Jesus today and you want me to pray with you to help you to know God your hand must be up and I want you to come to the front here with your hand up in the air just come to me in the front here come clap for them as they come 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 come, come all the way just keep coming come come give him your life today come It's not about being religious. It's about a relationship with God. The Bible says no one walked with God. No one knew God. You know 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 God. Keep clapping as they come. Keep clapping. Lift your hands up and I'm going to pray with you. 
Say this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, thank you for today. Salvation Sunday. I come to the cross just as I am. Please forgive me for my sins. I've done many bad things. Listen, if you are still standing in the congregation and you want to come, come now as I pray. Come, just walk to join them quickly. Come. I sense there's some people who want to come. Just walk out. Come. This is salvation. It's happening. It's happening now. I stopped praying because of you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Young lady, come on. Come on. Come to God. Come on, my friend. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Yes. Let's do it again. Let's pray again. Lift your hands, everybody. Now say with me, Jesus. I confess. I'm a sinner. A dirty sinner. I ask you to forgive me for all my sins. Please wash away my sins with the blood of Jesus. I open my heart. I open my heart and I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Please write my name in the book of life. Oh God, I'm so sorry for all my ways. Wash me, please, with the blood of Jesus. Accept me, Lord, as your child. Thank you for saving me. Cleanse me again. Cleanse me again. Cleanse me again from all my sins. I know I've done many wrong things. But today, today, I open my heart and I receive Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Shh. Quiet. I want her to be quiet. Quiet, quiet. Now, lift your hands like this. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, my name is, mention your name, my name is, whatever. Please write this name in the book of life tonight. Write my name. Register my name in the book of life tonight, today. Thank you for writing my name in the book of life. From this moment forward, I am born again. I am born again. I am a child of God. I will follow Jesus. For the rest of my life. Thank you Lord. For saving me. Thank you Jesus. For saving me today. I love you. And I thank you. In Jesus name. Now lift your. Only your right hand like this. Your finger. Only one finger. Say after me. Satan. Listen carefully. In the name of Jesus. I bind you. In the name of Jesus. I reject you from today. Me and you is finished. I will not follow you again. Satan, I will not obey you again because I belong to God. I belong to Jesus Christ. I bind you. I block you. I reject you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now lift your two hands like this. Say, Jesus, I love you. I thank you for saving me. From today, I am yours. Come into my heart and stay there forever. In Jesus' name, I love you, Lord. And everybody said, Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God. Oh, yeah, born of.
your seats. Go back to your seats, all of you who have this book. When we close, come to the, this side. Um, just outside this door here. We are going to meet you there. Is that a good place? You see wearing blue, come, stand up here. You see people like this, turn around, what is written on your thing? So, uh, blue. Anyway, it's blue. Color blue. Okay? Whatever is written there. When you see, they'll all be standing over there. When we close, don't go away. Just We are closing just now. But come there. They have something special for you. Already you have got something special. Isn't it true? Now, today is 23rd. 25th is what day? Tuesday. We have church here in the morning. Okay? 25th. Now, do you know that some people go to Kumasi to visit their girlfriends from Accra? Is Jesus not better than any girlfriend or boyfriend? So 25th, we are all coming here. Amen. 31st. 31st. Uh, 31st is what day? Monday. So Sunday is 30th. Next week, Sunday. Make sure you are here. And it's Thanksgiving Sunday. Do you know that some people go to Tamale to visit their boyfriends? From your house to here is not far. Is it not true? Yes. Jesus is changing your life. Amen. And then 31st. Don't miss your way to any church. We are all coming here. 10,000 people are coming here on 31st night. 10,000. Yes. Soon, some of you will be standing on this stage. Some will be singing. Some will be praising. Some will be acting. Doing many things for Jesus. Amen. Are you excited? So God bless you. As soon as we close, meet as there. Now, do you know who was listening to me when I was preaching? Eh? Do you know? Do you know who was listening to me? The devil. Mm. He was listening to me. And he was watching you. Do you know who was watching you when you were coming forward? Do you know anybody who was watching you? Can you think of anybody? The devil was watching. He said, ha! Ah, you say you are going away from my kingdom. You must be joking. But today you have rebuked the devil. He heard you when you said, I block you, I reject you. 
So today is the last day you will follow Satan. Amen. 31st night is Monday. Don't miss your way to any place. Amen. Tell your neighbor, don't miss your way to any place. We are all coming to First Lab Center. East Legon. Hallelujah. How many will be here? First, and I'm going to lay hands on everybody. Yes. Because I have to lay hands on you at least once in the year. I'm going to lay hands on everybody. I'll be tired, but I'll lay hands on everybody by the grace of God. Do you want me to lay hands on you? The quality of your life depends on the quality of the hands that have been laid on you. So I will anoint you with all and pray for everybody 31st night. 10,000 of us. We are all coming here. Alright? So it's a blessing. So God bless you. Tell the person standing by you who watch me, I've changed. Today is my day of salvation. God bless you. Go back to your seats. This is my story. This is my song. Raising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Oh, yeah. All right. It's time for communion. Father, thank you for the blessing of communion today in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive the bread and the wine and we are going to pray and we are closing in a minute. Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Drink, this is my blood Hallelujah. Now, do you know that I used to go to church and they used to give communion and I used to go and I didn't know what it was. Huh? Religion can have so many forms and rituals you don't even know what it's about anymore. Huh? Yes. Me, I don't like things that are not real. Do you like things that are not real? I want something real. So if I'm receiving communion, I want to receive something real. So today, we are going to receive bread and wine. But the bread, when we pray over it, we believe that it turns into the body of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus took the bread and said, this is my body. Amen. Then after that, he took the wine and he said, this is my blood. So by faith, it turns into blood. Okay? So we are going to be cannibals in a certain sense. Spiritual cannibals. We are going to eat flesh and drink blood. Wow. Are you, are you with me? Now, why would we want to do something like that? Some of the smallest tablets in the world can save your life. One day, somebody gave me a tablet to take. It was very small. I said, is that all? I said, yeah, that's all. You take it. And when I took it, I was okay. So, something small like this small bread and this small wine can change everything about you. If you have faith, something powerful will happen. So, we are going to take the bread and we are going to believe that it changes when we pray. Pray. It changes into what? The body. Then when we take the wine, we'll pray. But then we believe that it's changing to what? The blood of Jesus. Now, we are going to eat flesh and blood. Now, one of the ways you can look at it is something like transplant. You are going to receive kidney transplant. Brain transplant. Those who are not clever in school, your, brain, your brains are going to be transplanted. Your blood is going to have a blood transfusion. Hey, now whatever disease cannot be, can you imagine Jesus on admission? Jesus on admission is on a drip. No way. Jesus cannot be on admission. Jesus is in a coma. 
They are trying to resuscitate. He was drowning. He was drowning in the Sea of Galilee. We are resuscitated. It cannot, it cannot be. So whatever cannot be in Jesus, once you've taken in his body and his blood, whatever cannot be in Jesus cannot be because Jesus is now part of you. Amen. Can you imagine an robber telling Jesus, hands up. And Jesus said, I beg you, I beg you, don't kill me. Oh! Which hand will you use to do that? He will just breathe on. Like this. You, you, you go to hell. Stand to your feet. Take the bread. And let us pray. Father, we believe this is the body of Jesus. And we receive it right now. Thank you for this blessing. Let everyone who receives this receive an impartation and transplantation Amen. of the body of Jesus Amen. into our bodies. Whatever disease there is, is neutralized Amen. by this body, the body of Jesus Christ, the body and the flesh of Jesus. Now, this one is stronger than blue umu. That's right. It's stronger than key soap. Your sins cannot be washed with key soap, but this blood. Have you seen that some soaps are different colors? Yeah. Because some people are wondering that when the red blood washes, will you not become red? Wow. But there are some soaps that are green, some are red. Wow. And when you wash, you become white. Whatever you have done wrong, this blood cleanses you today. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. All things are purged by the blood. May your sins be purged as you take this blood. May you be forgiven and exempted from punishment because of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Lift your hands for your blessing. No movement. May you walk on your high places. Amen. As the year ends. Amen. Whatever you couldn't achieve. Yes. In the last 11 months. Yes. May you achieve it. Before 31st December. Amen. Whatever burden you are carrying yes. for the whole year yes. will never cross over with you by 31st December in the name of Jesus. Receive healing. I receive it. Receive grace. I receive it. Receive power. I receive it. And receive miracles. I receive it. In Jesus' name. Amen. As this year ends, and next year begins any curse following you this year oh, yes. is not crossing with you into the Amen. day why the blood of Jesus exempts you from punishment Amen. exempts you from the curse Amen. exempts you from wickedness Amen. in Jesus name Whatever power Noah had to be different, to be righteous in a wicked world, receive that power now. I receive it. Whatever is sick in your body and it's not correct, it conforms to the body of Jesus now. Amen. The perfection of the body of Jesus. Amen. Receive it in your Your hair is perfect. I receive your bones are perfect. I receive your organs are perfect. I receive your blood is perfect. I receive your nose is perfect. I receive your eyes are perfect. I receive, receive perfection in your I body now. In Jesus' name. Yes. Whatever grievous mistake you have made this oh, year yes. is being cleansed now by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Receive the blessings of forgiveness. I receive and hear the word of the Lord yes. the Lord has forgiven you Professor. the Lord has released you oh, yes. from your sins 
and from the judgments and the series of judgments that are determined because of your mistakes. May you live long and may you experience the forgiveness and the grace of God for all mistakes that came out of your mouth and out of your hands, out of your feet and out of your body. May you be set free by grace and by power. Receive grace as Noah received grace. Walk in grace as Noah walked in grace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let this blessing rest upon you. And let it rest upon anyone you touch. And anyone you come in contact with. By the blessing of the Lord you are prevailing. You are coming out higher than your friends expected. I declare you to become a pleasant surprise. You are declared a pleasant surprise for 2019. In Jesus name. May God give you a pleasant surprise I receive it. before the year ends. I receive it. Surprise packets I receive it. are released by angels I receive it. and superior supernatural powers I receive it. over your life. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone shouted, Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated. Take your offering as we close your tithes and your offering. Now, how many have watched a long film before? Long movies? What's the longest movie you've watched? World of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. How long is it? Three hours. Take out your tithes and let me pray. Father, thank you for everybody paying tithes today in Jesus' name. Amen. Come to the front and put your tithes in the basket. Very quickly, if you have your tithes, you know yourselves. Please, you can pay it right there. Um, If you are paying tithes, don't let the thing scroll. Just let the message come on. Don't long writing like that. Amen. Hallelujah. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Just let the message stay there, not writing. Please put your mess your your number on the thing. And God is blessing you. Amen. Pay your tithes. Now next week Sunday is Thanksgiving Sunday. So, we are all coming to say thank you. Isn't it? What, what are we wearing on that day? White. And Christmas Day is what color? Multicolored. Bright colors. If you don't have any bright colored, just wear blue. Or any other color that you have. Some of us don't have all these colors. It's a blessing. Amen. Wow. And as usual, we do not want you to miss this moment to be able to sow in this fantastic atmosphere. It is Salvation Sunday and I don't know what God has laid upon your heart to sow a seed. Whether you are believing for salvation for someone or you are just grateful for the salvation of your own soul. We want to give you an opportunity to give so you can simply log on to www.dagiewoodmills.org. Now if you are in the US, you can select the text to give option. So just click on the text to give icon and the instructions will follow and if you're anywhere else in the world and you would like to um, sow a seed um, you can also do so by simply clicking on the PayPal um, option so that is text to give if you are in the USA and PayPal for anywhere else in the world instructions are on the page so that is dagiewoodmills.org text to give in the USA and PayPal for everywhere else in the world and God bless you now outside give a good offering everywhere As you can see, we need a bigger church.
Psalm 96 and verse 8. Next week Sunday is Thanksgiving Sunday. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. So on Sunday, we are giving glory to God for, for what? Oh, are you feeling sleepy? Are you tired? Okay. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering. And come into his court. Psalm 96 verse 8. So next week Sunday is Thanksgiving Sunday. We are going to give glory to God for what he has done for us. We are going to bring an offering and come into his court. Is it biblical or not biblical? Shall I put the scripture on again for you to appreciate it? Psalm 96 and verse 8. Give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Okay. Bring an offering and come into his court. So we are thanking God all that he has done for you. You could have died this year. Look at you ending the year in glory and in style. Huh? What you think God hasn't done for you this year, he's about to do it for you in January. And you are, don't complain at all. Don't complain. Pleasant surprise. In Jesus' name. A pleasant surprise. How many are ready for a pleasant surprise? Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Pleasant surprises. The proposal you didn't have this year. As the year ends. Something is happening. Amen. Alright. So next week, Sunday. You know, when it comes to Christmas. Pastors, we, we don't have holidays. Because today is... Uh, 23rd, then Christmas is Tuesday, then Sunday is 30th, then 31st is Monday, and it goes on like that. Do you get it? And then weddings, 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 everyday weddings. So it's our peak season. So you give thanks to God. You have listened to preaching. We've traveled, we've gone, we've come, we've gone up and down. You get it? God has kept us. So at least there's something to say. Psalm 96 verse 8 says, Give glory to the Lord due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his court. So everybody get an envelope, write, Thank you, Jesus, for 2018. Thank you. And come and put it in. Bring your own envelope with your own thank you to God. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Who is going to lose from it? It's up to you. You get what I'm saying? We are not raising funds. We are telling you what is in the Bible. Give God, glory to the God due, due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. It's as simple as that. All right? Is it beautiful? Is it fantastic? Is it wonderful? Beautiful. All right? We are still waiting for the offering. And uh, 31st night is a swollen 31st night. 10,000 Today we have 7,000 chairs. I told you that we are going to be 10,000. So we are left with 3,000 people. So 31st December, they will come. Do you believe that they will come? Yes. And as we are building the church, we are all building it. Yes. And it's a young person's church. So now we'll be traveling more so that you, you, the young people, you do all the work. Then we just come Solin Sunday to enjoy Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you there? Yes. yes. Ask the person sitting next to you, do you have a beloved? No. Oh, at the back you will not ask. Tell the person God is doing something. Tell the person, don't worry, God is up to something.
Do you know that first love marriages are the best of all marriages? There are shouts of joy, screams of happiness, scratches of amazement, bangings of love, drums of rejoicing. It's just amazing. When you stay next to a first love couple and you are second or third love, that you feel dif- difficulty, intimidation, because there's so much joy next door. Your house is on silence, mute, with subtitles. It's yes, like you are watching a Korean film, French, a French film with sub- English subtitles. Are you ready? And you're not ready yet. Beautiful. So, please, next week, Sunday, 30th December, 30th, the last day before 31st. And then the next day is 31st. That's swollen 31st night. 10,000 practical people are coming here. We are going to sing, rejoice, and be happy. We close in the morning, we eat bullfruit. Tell all the they are eating bullfruit early in the morning. Yes. How many will be ready for that? Beautiful. Tell your neighbor, those of you who don't come to church much, you are missing them. Because we, we are enjoying them. We, we are enjoying them. Is it a blessing? Are you girls ready? All right. Who is doing the announcements?